check out this free video and make sure you hit like and subscribe. All right, Bobby Lashley's uh, deal. I mean, it looks like he could potentially be on his way out here. He is on his way out. Um, Bobby Lashley and MVP both. Um, I know that there is talk of them trying to get... There's talk of them trying to get into AEW. Um, I mean, te it's it's one of those things where technically nobody can talk to him because I don't believe either his contract has expired, but their contracts are going to expire. And they are, at this point, as, as things stand right now, um, WWE is under the assumption that they are gone and um, that they are going to try to revamp the Hurt Business. I don't know if they'll use that name or not. I guess it depends on the ownership of the name. I think I saw MVP try to um, register to own the name, which would mean that they would maybe even try to use the name. But um, whatever it is, they want to get Shelton Benjamin, who's also a free agent, and revamp the group in AEW. Whether this happens or not, I mean, it depends on Tony Khan. But it's, it's definitely something that is... Um, I don't know, say under consideration. It's 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 not a. I don't believe it's a done deal or anything like that. But it is something that is alive. But um, as of right now, um, Bobby Lashley and uh, MVP are both going to be gone from WWE when their contract expires, which is relatively soon. When was the last time we even saw MVP? Well, MVP's only been doing uh, house shows okay. as the manager. I don't of, think he's uh, even been on TV in two years. Yeah, they never. Well, whatever. Whenever the last time Omos was on, he's his manager. Uh, God, when was the last time Omos was even on? Omos was on TV in a, in a battle royal once. I remember that. Um, but he's rarely on. But Omos has been doing, you know, house shows, and MVP was part of that act. You know, doing, uh, you know, promos in front of the crowd and everything like that. They were doing that every week. You know, I don't say every weekend, but most weekends until. Somewhat recently, I don't, you know, and there haven't been a lot of house shows lately. But when they were doing house shows, they were doing, um, they were doing uh, Omas and uh, Akira Tozawa pretty regularly. So he was on those shows. Okay, so Omas's last three appearances on TV, or, or these are just last three appearances. Well, on TV, yeah, he had the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, right? And then prior to that, it was the Royal Rumble. Yeah. <laughs> prior to that was SummerSlam. And his last, like, TV, uh, and then Backlash. So, like, yeah, he has not been around. Monday Night Raw, April 3rd of 2023 yeah. was the last time he's been on television. Yeah, yeah. They were keeping him off TV as a project. He beat and, Elias, of all people. And they were, uh, you know, just trying to get him experience on house shows for the last year. And, um, you know, they, he would do these, uh, like... Like uh, matches with Tazawa, he'd do like three to four minute matches with Tazawa, like not like a one minute match or anything. Trying to just get him some ring time. MJF going to Mexico. Yeah, so that is uh, a week from Friday, not the twenty sixth, but August second. Um, the twenty sixth, um, the card I don't is, has not been announced. I don't believe, and I didn't. I have not watched Arena Mexico either, but um, the. Um, Pentagon Phoenix and um, Pac are going to be on the July 26th show. The August 2nd show, MJF will be defending the title against the winner. They're having a tournament on Tuesday, and it's um, Templario, Flip Gordon, um, I think it's uh, Esfinge, and um, what's the other names here? Um, Rujito and Zondokan Jr., Stuka Jr., uh, Verano, and um, one other name that I am. Um, what is this name here? Uh, I don't. A Valiente. So um, it's kind of weird, you know. Usually they don't. They, you know, Templario will make a, will be an would be an interesting opponent. I would say, that. I mean, Templario is awesome. He's like probably, I mean, he's the best guy in CMLL, really. I think right now. I mean, as far as just best freaking worker, and he's just turned babyface, and um, does a lot of acrobatics, but very solid. Um, flip. I don't see him doing Flip Gordon. I just don't see that match. 
Um, Valiente, veteran, don't see that. Esfinge, mm, maybe. Ruhito and Zondokan, I don't feel they're ready at that level. Um, Sticker Jr., he's good. He's good. Um, Averno is really good. Uh, but he's also a, a Rudo. Although, you know, the idea of an American heel against a uh, Mexican Rudo, I mean, that is part of the culture there, but it's usually a higher-ranked guy defending Mexico. So, um, I mean, we'll see. It's gonna, they're, they're doing that. They're doing a rare Tuesday angle for Friday or Tuesday tournament for Friday. Usually it would be for, you know, a, they would do the tournament on Friday for the next Friday, but that's how they're doing it. We did, in fact, by popular demand, watch Ready to Rumble. The champion is some fat loser. Yeah, he's a completely talentless, no athletic ability, can't wrestle, it, broke bum that walked out on his wife and kid. But he and was he's over. the world champion. He and was, in the he, movie, the Well, yeah, but that's is, a microcosm of wrestling, sadly. Yes. He feels so bad about drinking this entire slushy that cost $1.26, and he... He sticks his finger in his asshole and walks up to the clerk. Lance and, and Lance is dying. How could the movie be so bad? I'm not going to fault the man for that, of all the things in the movie. I thought okay. for sure you were going to say you'd done this before. There's a reason I'm not going to fault the man for that. I, I just think with all the porta potties and farting in this, that I think Vince McMahon was a secret uh, producer on this film. Had to have been. So then we get the, the Shermanator. He's played a WCW arcade game. He uses some internet sleuthing to find the personal information of Jimmy King. He's searching the internet. Can find out anything on here. This movie is so antiquated. Every Nitro Girl is in a Nitro Girl outfit. Except for this girl. And they had they her dance in something to totally out, different. Brian, Like the captain. So we're so stupid. I got it. Captain yes, Stabbing? if you're watching this film, you're that stupid. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I was also insulted by the fact they hired Michael Buffer to announce the Royal Bash, the fake-ass Royal Bash. $24 million budget. Wow. And probably 500000 of that went to Michael Buffer. It made twelve. You know, we he should unveils. mention this this cage match is the triple decker cage of doom. Everybody buried it. It was horrible. Everybody hated it. And uh and so they decided to make a movie. And what is the final battle? It's another goddamn triple decker cage match. This would be like in, in twenty ten if like TNA made a movie and the final the final match was a reverse battle royal. They throw powder in someone's face, DDPs, I think, or somebody's. And the dude just looks at him and goes, it doesn't work. And it's like, of course, because wrestling's fake and stupid. Should we just end it there? What a, what a sound bite. There has never been a movie I have watched in my entire life, which has made me hate myself more. Wow. I'm ashamed that I'm even in the place at 41 years old where I would end up reviewing this movie for money. I would have thought I would have made it out of here by now. You know what I mean? I'm done. Well, everyone, hopefully we can do this again someday. Instead of suffering through the YouTube chat, click like and subscribe.